Well, I'm back, guys. So if you guys didn't notice, I did a Instagram live feed. It's early in the afternoon um, because I've been working part-time hours with Aflac. I did a bunch of stuff this morning. Uh, set up a time to meet with a client to help do a claim. Met with a couple other people. Made an appointment or two. But that's not what we're here to talk about because you guys really don't care about that side of my life. What you guys seem to care about is this. What I do here at this bench. So today we're going to do... I have to do a tip repair on this um, for Jeremy, Jeremy Morris. This is that uh, 0350C B ZDP, which is uh, in ZDP 189. So this is a laminated blade, so it's a composite blade, so there's two different steels. I'm not sure what the steel on the spine is, but the front is ZDP 189. You can actually see the weld point or the marriage point of these two. I don't know how they actually do that. I've seen a lot of blades done that way. It's not uh, unattractive, but you can definitely feel the spot where they marry up. But the tip got broke off this. Um, I also have got to do, have to finish Al's cold steel. Uh, we worked out a deal, me and Al, where to save him money, when I had time, I could work on it piecemeal because this one is very badly ground. I might get some video of that for you. And I also have to do this one for my follower, my subscriber in Singapore. So, oops, 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 oops. This is a Todd Begg. Uh, I'm gonna drop something here, I'm gonna have to pick that up. Um, it's Todd Begg uh, design. It's the Steelcraft series that they're doing um, through Wii or React. I think these are done through React and the others are done through React. At any rate, so what we did was we did some anodizing on this, which did not come out the way we intended. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw the live feed that night. What happened was this was all black. Uh, we thought it was um, we thought it was a PVD coating of some sorts. Uh, we don't know exactly what happened, but the second I put this in the anode tank, the black coating came off. So uh, we did wind up with some two-tone where you have a darker blue and a, light, and, a, and a nice electric blue. It needs cleaned up a little bit. I have to sharpen this so I can get it sent to him in Singapore. These are nice knives. I don't like the design per se, but I do like the overall execution. These are done well. Uh, and then you get cracked ice finish on, on all this stuff. There will be a video about this one. I have got to finish it, clean it up, sharpen it. Um, I'm not going to take it apart again because it is IKBS. Um, and then I have just got this one back. This is Ryan uh, in Texas. He just passed his bar exam. Congratulations, Ryan. And is uh, now an assistant district attorney there in Texas. But this one just came back. This was his custom Hornet. Um, there's a little hiccup in here, um, which is why I had intended on getting it back instead of just having it sent as finished. Um, sometimes when you're doing Kydex, there'll be some scratches on the finish. Easy to fix because this is just a blast mat, um, which is matte. It's blasted and then polished, and you get a matte finish, and then I still have some polishing left to do on the actual spine. So that's going to be an easy fix, just quick touch-up, and I want to re-anodize the removable hardware. So this one was done with a green paper micarta and a titanium liner. All the titanium is bronzed. It's anodized bronze and the hardware everything. So this one is done. It needs some touch up and then finish sharpen. But Matt at Armidus Carry knocked it out of the park with this sheath. I will definitely get a picture of this. It is carbon fiber pattern Kydex in OD green with Matt's um, his sheaths are always awesome. They are just amazing. Uh, good retention, no issues, nice and smooth, always awesome. I, I am so glad that uh, Pip Corona got me in touch with Matt. So what this video really is about though, sorry it took us so long to get to it, is the Ferrum Forge Design Jets 4. Now this one is a production sample. This is the production sample. This is the PU2 <laughs> because the serial number on it is P002. So it's production uh, sample uh, 002. It is an S35BN. This is their latest offering through uh, Mastrop. And it is awesome. It really is for a small lightweight knife. 
there's very little issues that I have with it at the price point. Um, pocket clip, it's a deep carry pocket clip, but in a suit, it comes in handy. Extremely light, it has got um, titanium liners with a G10 onlay, black G10 onlay. Nice thin pocket clip, it doesn't, it's not gonna tear your pants up. Nicely shaped blade, it's a lot like the Crux in its design. S35VN, like I said, Wii's S35VN has always done fairly well. I haven't had any issues with this. I've had this for about two weeks. This is Elliot's um, production sample. I shouldn't say prototype. This is a production sample because this is what's rolling off the line. So just any last minute things. I use this enough. I just actually resharpened this yesterday. So we're going to turn around so you guys can see. I'll turn the camera around so you guys can get a better look at it. But I mean, Left hand, right hand carry. There's spots for the pocket clip to go on either side. Hardware to take off the onlay if you wish. It is not skeletonized at all in there, that titanium liner. It is really, really nice. I do believe it's titanium liner. It could be steel. I'm not sure. I probably should check into that before. <laughs> I just say that. So yeah, give me a second. We'll get this thing turned around so you guys can take a look at the gents folder. So guys, here is the gents folder and you can see the G10 is done the same way on both sides. You can almost see it. it's like a wood grain. Um, flipping action on this is awesome. It really is. It's got a nice choil right here that you can kind of choke up in. It's almost too small for my fingers, but it is definitely a well done sharpening notch. Um, these are titanium. I went and checked. These are titanium scales. Uh, the pocket clip, like I said, nice and thin. It does not cause any hot spots this knife is all around just about perfect for somebody to for a nice light edc carry um and i do know that a lot of people complain about this mass drop logo but i would point to how much i used it it's got gunk and stuff on it that mass drop that mass drop logo is not that obtrusive it's not um everything is chamfered well lockup is nice and not even quite 50%. Um, I'm not a guy that really cares about that so much, but I will tell you this knife, I've put it through some heavy use for a small knife. And I would say there's a little bit of play in that, um, in that pivot, but I am sure that if I took these scales off, I could tighten that pivot up a little bit because it runs on bearings. This is a pretty cheap knife. And I, when I say cheap, I mean affordable cheap. I don't mean like cheaply made. This is a knife that for the price, I'm surprised they were able to offer it at that price. Um, but I was around when Elliot made the design. I really liked this design. Um, everything that he's been designing is just, it's awesome. And I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the fact that there are now options available. Like I said, you can remove those scales, just Torx, Torx construction. Um, it is a liner lock, but to tell you the truth, the liners on this are so thick that you may as well just say it's frame lock. Because that's what it is. I mean, it is a frame lock. It's just got onlays. Um, it's not a liner lock it's like you see in, let's see, what's this 0350 look like? No, this one's got some fairly thick. I've, I've seen really, really, really thin liners on a lot of knives that, that have come in that I've sharpened, and this one is not. So basically, it's, I, I, can, I would say it's almost frame lock. Uh, with the exception that it just has an onlay. So there's no issue with being able to get in there. Action on it is really smooth. It's not going to be one of those ones that just free falls, but it is on bearings. And like I said, there's a lot of gunk in that. I haven't taken it apart and cleaned it. Um, but the bearings that they're using on this are the same bearings that they're used, that we use on its budget line knives. Uh, I've taken the crux, the uh, Falcon, I've taken one of these apart. I haven't taken this one apart, but yeah, it's same construction that you're going to see in most Wii knives. Uh, that bearing system is in there. It is got, it does have, I should say, um, it's not an enclosed stop pin. It's an internal stop pin, but it's not enclosed. So easier to keep gunk and stuff from building up in there. That's my only issue with the Falcon. Uh, I do not like an enclosed stop pin, internal stop pins. Uh, so that's as opposed to internal stop pins as opposed to on this that's your stop pin right there so 
that's an external stop. Um, a lot of ZTs have it. Uh, the Microtech DOC Striders have that. This is, an, this is an internal stop pin. It's just exposed internally as, expo as, as, as opposed to being inside a track like a Grimm's Mow or like the Falcon is. So, I mean, like I said, nice thin behind the edge. Uh, it is pretty slicey. It's good at it's good at cutting through just about anything. Um, but it's still it's the same thickness blade stock that you'd see in say a Sabenza. Um, it feels about the same. So yeah, um, this one the chamfers are a little deeper on one side. But like I said, this is a production. This is a production sample. This isn't one that was going to roll off the line because this is, as I said, the poo too. <laughs> so, and to get in here close on this, so you guys can see some of this, like I said, I wanted to make sure I did a shout out to Matt. These, these sheaths are, they're gorgeous. He does amazing work. And I've sent him several different knives. They've all been different dimensions um, of these Hornets that I make. They all are different dimensions and he still gets them all looking identical. Um, but like I said, you know, that's, this is why this knife wasn't completely finished when I sent it. Um, because that happens. Um, the ceramic coating seems to prevent it a little bit, but yeah, you can see green paper, micarta, you can see some of the pattern in it. If I can get this to focus, you can see there's a pattern in it. I have the removable hardware that still needs to be re-anodized and I'm probably going to re-polish re and re-anodize the, uh, the liner underneath the scales so Matt your knife is or Ryan your knife is very close to being headed its way towards Texas yeah so guys let me get this turned back around and we'll continue to talk hi right, guys yeah like I said this this thing's amazing I'm I'm sorry I was not trying to plug my custom knives I just definitely wanted to get a shout out out there to Matt um, he's he's quick he's done really good on turnaround times and stuff uh, yeah, this knife, um, this knife's pretty freaking awesome for the price point. I think these one came out at $99. Um, you're not going to find, you're not going to find anything better, um, at that price point. You may think, find things comparable and some people would disagree with me. I personally think that between this design, the price point and how light this thing is, it's just, it's awesome. But like I said, it's it's not without its flaws. It, it isn't, and you know, I may be a Ferrum Forge fanboy, but uh, definitely do if there's if I see issues with it, I'm definitely gonna let you guys know. I wouldn't I wouldn't pull any punches. Elliot's never pulled any punches when he looks at stuff I make. So, so all right, guys, that's it. I have got to get some of this stuff started and done because I have got to do some phone enrollment later this afternoon with some kids from a business. Um, so I'm kind of burning the candle at both ends. I am going to start making some more knives. Uh, I just talked with uh, one of my subscribers who is asking how much a plate of that steel would cost because that's another thing. You guys, you guys have been amazing. Um, I've had people donate money to the channel. Uh, Ken Robson uh, pay, double overpaid me double uh, for sharpening his knives. And when I pointed out his error, he's like, hey, I just wanted to help the channel. I've had Jeremy um, who his knives are here. A couple of his knives have been here on the bench offer to play for a plate of steel um, just because so I, I just can't tell you guys um, what it means that you guys are willing to do those things for me I it it really surprises me but when I think about how I've done this channel on and my life my whole life is open to you guys it really shows that that is something you guys appreciate um, Matt Carricker from Demolition Ranch got his knife um, and he mentioned it on the channel uh, he didn't put it I wasn't expecting I wasn't trying to get a shout out for Matt I I sent the knife because I was appreciative of the things he does on his channel and it's it's influenced the way I do some things and adding family vlogs and things like that in uh, and in the way I interact with my subscribers um, and I asked him a, I asked him a serious question like how do you deal with um, inappropriate comments towards your family and and he answered it in the video in his latest off the ranch video uh, and that was amazing he showed the knife and everything so like I said I wasn't trying to get a shout out I just wanted to it was a way to say thank you to someone that has influenced the way I do things and kind of influenced my life um, the giveaway on birds channel will be coming 
Uh, I have to talk with Bird about how we're going to do it, when we're going to do it. We were supposed to wait until I got 3,000 subscribers total. Um, I haven't even gotten two yet. I think he's kind of disappointed in it. I got a total like 600 subs on that. Uh, but, you know, I don't want to hold up the giveaway and be selfish. Uh, I may tell him, hey, let's just do it. Let's just do the giveaway. But, like I said, you have to be subscribed to my channel. He's going to do the... Uh, He's going to do the giveaway on his channel, and then the person gets to pick their color options for their knife. I had two Deadpool knives in this run of five. Uh, basically, I was going to do a checker pattern for um, for a guy, and it just uh, Brian, who's bought a couple of my knives. He actually bought a Hornet. Um, I, I just I, I can't do the checker pattern, so he's going to do a Deadpool pattern. Uh, but I want all of them to be unique and specific and different so we're gonna see what i can do on that so all right guys i don't want this video to be any longer i've got stuff i've got to do um i'm gonna drink the rest of my hot cocoa and sharpen some knives so i like i said cannot express how much i appreciate the things that you guys have been willing to do to support me and the channel and my family and so to that i would say thank you all i really appreciate it um yeah that's it i gotta get off of here i gotta do some other stuff i i will uh get this wrapped up and I'll get it posted sometime tonight. So you guys take it easy and I'll see you next time.